Hello and welcome to Orient Outreach. I'm your host, Stacey Calloway, and today I'm joined by a special guest, Dr. Mary Welsh, who is the president and co-founder of Suzy Q's Kids. Yes. How are yes. you doing today? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for having me here today. Absolutely. I was going to say thank you for doing this because talk to me about how did Suzy Q's come about? How did that start? Uh, you know, sadness can bring joy. And so my story is sad. My daughter passed away six years ago, and her name was Susie. Always wanted to have kids that wasn't in her cards. And she, you know, in order to um, really to embrace her and the life that she had, we decided to, to create Susie Q's Kids. And she's at a perch somewhere in this world, and she's watching over all these kids that we're helping. And you thought of this because you said that, you mentioned that she had, um, what is it, a panda, and she'd always go to the hospital with like a blanket. Yeah. So she would be in the hospital months at a time, okay. and that the life would just be sucked out of you, right? And so she knew the value of a teddy bear, a blanket, and a coloring book. So when we thought what we wanted to do with kids, it was a panda bear, a blanket that they can cuddle up with, and a coloring book that they can just wild away the days with. And you have more things. You brought a couple of, um, of, the, of items here. Talk yeah. to me about the um, the autism packet that yeah. you have here. Yeah, so every bag gets coloring books, crayons, Uno cards, uh, playing cards, um, go fish, different things like that, Play-Doh. But then in addition to that, we will create what I call component bags. And so okay. this one goes to an autistic child and it has spinners, poppers, you know, squishy balls, mm -hmm. all the things to, to uh, keep them engaged. Um, if we're going to a, a a shelter or a foster care agency, they're going to get a hygiene bag with full bottles of shampoo and toothpaste and not disposable type. Um, if they go into a grief center, they're going to get inspirational items and a grief book. So we, we tailor it to the needs of the organization that's going to get it and the kids in their programs. And then what exactly is your mission? So What's my mission is threefold. Okay. So um, we create uh, comfort bags. And they go to a variety of places. They go to hospitals, anything in the health you know, industry. They go to foster care, to shelters. They go to autistic kids, grieving kids, any kind of kids that's in need. But we, we use our program through another nonprofit because we always want to further their mission. The second part of our program is we engage kids. So we're the community partner of the year for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Mm -hmm and I'm a strong advocate for the power of positivity. So how can we flip our perspective? So I go in and I talk to kids about that, get them talking about what their situations are, and safe words and safe places and things like that. And then I say, how do you want to help a kid? And so they get to pick what type of kid they want to help. So maybe somebody in their class has cancer or somebody in, is uh, uh, you know, in foster care or adopted. And so they pick what it is and then they decide if they're going to um, fundraise for us, okay. penny wars or whatever they want to do, or if they want to just help us put the bags together. And at the end of the day, mm -hmm. there's kids all over this world, place that have these, these bears and blankets. And, and that was my next question to you. How many kids would you say, just an approximation, how many kids have these, these bags that you've been able to help in the past six years. So we've helped over 10,000 kids. Wow. Yeah. And so, how does that feel, helping that many? I went, to a com I went to a convention one day and I wore that great bright green uh, backpack on my back and I had the teddy bear sticking out here. Mm -hmm. Now, just imagine, crazy lady in this audience, right? And a lady come up and she tapped me on the shoulder and her and her husband both started crying. I never see because I give it away right. to another nonprofit. But they said they didn't know who I was or where I came from, but they had lost a child and two other children got this bag. And the bear is named and grandma has to babysit it when they go out because that's how important that, that, that panda bear is. So we know we make an impact. Exactly. And and once again, you know, it's it's really it's it's one of those things where how can you give back? And so how do people um, how do they reach you to donate some of the items, or even is it done monetarily? Yeah, so our website has a lot of ideas on it. It's Suzy Q's Kids, it's Q with an S in the middle, okay. um, dot org. And um, they can always reach out to me at Dr. Mary at org. And 
I tailor the program. So whatever your organization or you know, um, you know, the donating or that it's receiving needs, we try to put that together. And how many calls would you say you get? You know, sorry again. Um, how many calls would you say you get? Like, is it from the hospitals and all of? You the know. We get quite a bit, um, but I always have to kind of tailor it to what grant funding I can get or what you know sponsor I can get to help us out because it's um, you know it, it gets a little labor intensive. But we have a lot of people that just offer in-kind products, and we you know we stuff the bags and. Um, the Lions Club of Sterling Heights, they allow us to use their facility once a month and we go and they allow us to um, put the bags together. So I never know if there's 40 or 40 that's going to show up that day, okay. but we always make, you know, several hundred bags and, and give them out. So once a month you go to the Sterling Heights location. Do other businesses offer their facilities as well? Yeah, so we're always looking for ways to engage employees. So we've had organizations that have had us come in. Um, Clarity Voice was one of them and um, we came in and did a, a, a bag stuffing day and, mm -hmm. and then we had the nonprofits come and pick the bags up at, at the um, organization. So they actually got to see a couple of the kids get the bags, which is fairly rare for me. Nice. Yeah. That's really nice. And so you mentioned that you've won a few awards. How do you think Susie would feel with the work that you're doing to carry on her legacy? Uh, you know, Susie always was, she would give you the shirt off her back. She, um, she called me one day and said, hey, the guy in the next room had his clothes cut off when he came in the emergency room. Not fair, Mom. You need to go get him some stuff. And I went and got him a whole new outfit, came in, and she's like, oh, that's wonderful. So she would have just given you whatever she had. Um, so I know that she's uh, she's just smiling and, and grinning from ear to ear. And we we find pennies and dimes and, and different little signals that we, we always associate with her. So we know we're doing a good thing. And you mentioned to me that once you were talking to one of your other daughters, about um, you know something you, you had a powerful story yeah. that you wanted to share. So um, one of my daughters, I saw her. Um, she lives out in LA. She was in town this last week, and she says, "Mom, how do you talk to all these people all the time? What you know? What keeps you going?" And I said, "Well." Every day is a good day when I know that there's a, somebody holding a panda bear. I says, but I talk everywhere. I'm a major collaborator is what I say. I says, but you know what I see when I'm, I'm talking to the audience, right? My daughter's flitting around in the room and she's smiling and she's just grinning from ear to ear and right. two thumbs up every time. So that that's my nice. visual picture and it makes me smile every day. That certainly just, just kind of warms <laughs> your heart. What, um, what kind of events that do you have coming up? So um, we've got a great event coming up here in November um, with, um, we're in connection with the Lake Orion Lions and Love Inc. And so it's a collaboration event for nonprofits so that we can all find out what each of us are doing in the community mm -hmm. so that we can make our reach even better. And so, so that's pretty exciting. So we've got that coming up in November. Um, Right now, we're in the middle of uh, suicide months, right? Mental health. So, uh, we have a Fern in Ferndale. We are doing um, the next suicide walk there. So, we'll be manning the children's tent. So, if you want to come out, you can come by and stop by and say hi. Um, and we always have different uh, different um, events, other than that, once a month that we have. So, it's always exciting. So, you did mention that September is um, Suicide Month. Is this the time also where you get a lot of calls or you have to make more um, more bags? Yeah, so people always ask me what's my affiliation with suicide awareness and prevention mm -hmm. and I say I work with the kids. I give bags to the kids that are at risk. I feel the most. Kids that are dealing with mental illness and mm -hmm. sick, kids in a foster care, kids in a shelter, kids that are autistic. So I, you know, um, I think each of us has been touched at some point by by suicide, and if I can move that meter just a little bit in the positive direction, that's a good day. And you do it all with a smile on your face. I know it's a lot of work. Yeah. It really is, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, some days we crash, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, for most day, most point, you know, we get up and um, I know that I'm going to be helping another child or, or another group or another individual, you know, make it through their day a little bit better, even if it's just listening. 
right? Listening is a good thing. And so you, we go into the schools and we talk to the kids and um, it's so powerful. It's okay not to be okay. And um, I did a lunch and learn and there was um, some kids and their pizza came in and it was ready and I had done my spiel and I said, tell me five things. Tell me five things you learned today. And one said, I learned tomorrow's not guaranteed. I should give everybody a hug tonight and tell them I love them. And another little young man stood up and said, I learned it's okay not to be okay. I didn't know that. I thought there's something wrong with me. And then I said, can we raise our hand if we don't feel okay today? And a couple did. I said, now can we raise our hand if we've not felt okay some point this week? And everybody raised their hand. Wow. And the kids just went like, and it was just that light bulb that made everything I did that day worthwhile because yeah. he, re he recognized that, so. And it seemed as though this is your calling because at first you were um, doing things with executive leadership and then here it is, you were the master collaborator and putting all of these things together. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, you can help a business, you can help a business in a different direction. And so mine is now from that community aspect and making sure that we're um, all connecting individually, emotionally, physically, you know, and uh, helping to uh, make this world a better, brighter place. And I'm sure she's shining down just thinking about all the work that you're doing, not only for the kids, but also for the, all the different organizations throughout the community. So definitely, you know, a heartfelt thank you for coming in. And if you ever need anything of us, you know, certainly um, reach out. I'm going to share one final story with Absolutely. you. Absolutely. I. I have five grandchildren. My youngest one lost his uncle to suicide at two years of old. And, you know, Uncle Keith was a big part of his life, but how much does he really remember of Uncle Keith, right? And then Aunt Susie, a year later. So two powerful people in his life were just gone. And if we don't talk about them, the story, it just, it, it's in the background, and it's not in the background. They're with us, they're always with us. So we were driving, he was probably about four years old, he's in the back seat of my car, and we drove by the tank arsenal, and he said, oh, Uncle Keith drove the tank! And I said, oh, he still does. And the little hands went on the hip, Nana, <laughs> Nana, don't be silly, he's an angel. And I said, oh, he's still in the tank. No, no, Anna. So I always believe in teaching moments. I pulled off the road. I turn around. I look at him. I said, "So you don't believe Uncle Keith's in the tank?" He's like, "Nope. He's an angel." I said, "Well, what do angels do?" What do you mean? I said, "Well, they have jobs. What is their job? What, what's his, Uncle Keith's job?" He's like, "Angels have jobs?" I said, "Yes." He says, "I don't know." I said, "Well, think about it. Tell me." He goes. Oh, He's in the tank and he's protecting all the soldiers that are protecting you and me. And I said, yes, he is. And then the little stinker turned around on me and he said, well, Nana, what's Aunt Susie's job? And I didn't know what to say. Let the kids talk, right? Mm -hmm. I said, well, what did Aunt Susie like? Well, that's easy. She loved me. I said, she did. I said, how come? He said, oh, I'm special. She couldn't have any kids. I'm special. I'm like, oh. yes, you were. I said, so what would her job be? Oh, Nana, so easy. She's in heaven taking care of all the babies until their mom and daddies can come and get them, and then she'll let them mom, mom and daddies have the babies. i like, wow. perfect, right? right? That's a story that I'll keep forever. I always Absolutely. say I'm a storyteller, but. Um, that touches your heart. You know, it's, and How old is he the now? little one, he's nine now. Okay. He um, just went to a funeral for his, his grandma mm -hmm. and he was having a little bit of a moment at the funeral parlor. And I said, do you remember the story he told me? He goes, not really. I've heard you say it, but can you tell me again? I said, well, I'll ask you the question. And he told me the same answers. I said, see, it's true. That's true. And uh, I mentioned to you that we uh, do the suicide walks. So we were at a suicide walk two weeks ago and um, over at Stony Creek and this young family come up to the table and this girl come running up and she said, I'm so glad you're here. And I was tired that morning and I thought, it's emotional, right? Mm -hmm. And um, 
I said, oh my God, it's so good to see you. And she goes, I think of you often. And I said, you do? And she goes, yes, I'm away at school. I had to come home from college to come and, and acknowledge my dad and to see you. And she said, you make a difference. And I don't know that you know that. And I said, tell me. And she goes, well, four years ago when my dad died, we showed up here, the entire family. And you sh listened and you let us talk. And they each, they each walked away with beads. And these beads, if you ever um, had said something, if you would have said something, each bead has a different story. Okay. I always tell people, take two, two beads that you share and the rest are all for you. So I'll share one. So this one here, my mom's in heaven, right? And so it reminds me of her. If you ever met my mom, oh my God, she was a hoot. And I said, <laughs> all you gentlemen out there, doesn't matter if you're three or 98, my mom would have hit on you, <laughs> hands down, right? Okay. You laughed. Mm -hmm. You let me tell a story about someone very special to me, mm -hmm. and you laughed. And a lot of times, somebody will tell me about their crazy auntie or their nana or their, their, their grandma or their mom. And so it's a story starter. Mm -hmm. uh, but it has to be a funny story. Right. They each got beads. They came back the next year, they bought more beads. You know, they each got more beads. And every picture has a thumbs up. So they come back every year just to get a picture with me with the thumbs up. And so you mentioned that you did this one at Stony Creek last week, right? Right. And so you have another one coming up in Ferndale. What was the day for that? Um, Ferndale is, Oct it's a Saturday. It's okay. October 9th or 10th, and okay. I think it's the 9th. Yeah. And so. so when people come up to you and say, you made a difference, you know, even though maybe you were tired and maybe didn't feel like coming out that day, you're like, I've, I've got to do this. Cause so. You keep making a difference in yeah. people's lives. So you're out there and you're talking to somebody and you just connect, you know. I, my stories could go on and on and on, but there's a reason why I'm out doing what I'm doing because somebody needs to be heard mm -hmm. and I need to share. Right. So. And there's such good stories. The end of the day, mm -hmm. I always say there's two things you need to do by eight o'clock to keep your life balanced. And what is that? What did you do for yourself today? Mm. And what did you do for someone else? Nice. And if I wrote a diary, so a, a journal, you could diary, you could put it in there, but you don't need to buy my book. You just need to answer that question. If it's all about you, you're not balanced, you're not getting any intersperse of other people or humanity into you, and you get stuck on your own self and your issues you have. And if you're always solving somebody else's, you know, eight o'clock and eat a bowl of ice cream or a hot bubble bath or whatever it is, because you need to take care of yourself as well. And how do you take care of yourself? Uh, I watch I watch my shows. <laughs> on I'm on Sunday. I'm a little horse today because okay. I went to the football game yesterday. Okay. And I go. Won, I so. have season tickets with the Lions, yes. and um, I go with my husband, my my uh, dad, my mm -hmm. son, and my grandson. Can you call me the luckiest lady around? That's I it. think so. I want you to put your thumbs up in the air. You smiled. See. It's I automatic. I don't know what it is about yeah, it, but it you is. smile. Yeah. Okay. Now I want you to attach somebody to your thumbs. Okay. So for me, it will forever be my daughter Susie and my mom. Mm -hmm. They're with me always. So whenever you take a picture, I want you to put your thumbs up. You'll smile. Yep, absolutely. And when you look back on that picture, I don't care if it's a silly selfie, a birthday, a graduation, a wedding, whatever the event is, you'll know that they were with you because you'll actually see your thumb up in the air and you did that physical sign. And if you do that with children, it makes the connection. It's, that it's concept powerful. is there. And so they're always, so my, my, my grandson, he was three when he lost his aunt. Every first day of school, I guarantee you, the first picture is going to be. He's got his two thumbs up. <laughs> I will never look so, at two thumbs up again. <laughs> Every time you see a thumbs up, you're going to you're going to think of Susie Q. <laughs> well, thank you for smiling uh, through oh, it all, thank and then you. thank you too for bringing, making a tragedy and turning it into something so positive and and so you know joyous for other kids. Oh, I'm just I'm just carrying on the the, the mission that my daughter had in life. And, right. and it's very easy in that when I look at it from that direction. Well, thank you so, so much thank again. You. And thank you for Thumbs tuning up, in everyone. <laughs> to this edition of Orient Outreach. Once again, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.